so today is live session 3 for this course geographic information system i hope you guys have visited all the open source data sets what i have mentioned to you people any of you went to that survey of india google earth and qgis things any of you yes ma'am i visited three uh, softwares uh, one is uh... ंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिंग्लीटिं
you need to get some skills to understand and to work with raster data if you are having basic skills over that you will be easily perform any analysis over the raster kind of data in the gis and then hands on over that i have showed you like I have seen few people have been there for that, but uh, I feel if you guys follow that instruction I have shared in my YouTube link, you can go through on that. You download from Deva GIS that uh, administration or river basin or any roadmap, whichever things you are interested in, you download that file that will come under shape file format and demo also is there, which is raster data and try to import in your quantum GIS software. And then see the feature, the attribute table, the information uh, to uh, information tab. You will be able to understand which kind of data we are dealing with, which kind of data we are working upon. And data collection processes like open sources, I have told you how to get from the open. Three, four open sources I have worked upon and I have showed you. If you are more interested, you can explore by your own self. So these are the things. And importing also. For India shapefile, I have showed you. Please follow that uh, video and you try to do and you will feel good when you import by your own self and you will see what are the feature you are able to deal with in case of vector data i have showed only for vector data but raster also i imported anyone was there raster demo also i have imported from bhuvan right hello yes ma'am raster data also i have imported right yeah ma'am yeah ma'am yeah. yeah so you can also go with that so today's topic is advanced data model in gis data generation data collection and survey data collection and surveying like how we deal with primary data and secondary data primary data are those data sets which we are, which as a surveyor people are going on that place and collecting the data so that is more reliable because we are having those data in our hand but in case of secondary data, you can select remotely sensed data or those data sets which we are going from the department and from their database management system, we are going and taking and working upon it. Sometimes it can be reliable, sometimes it can't. So, so like that, we ourselves used to analyze, see the errors, see the uh, inappropriacy and work upon uh, our own interest. So like that, we have to perform. So 2D, two-dimensional GIS like if an entity or a point or line is represented in two values, like x, y coordinate. 2.5 dimensional GIS means z, like uh, the depth or height is a function of your x, y domain. Okay, x, y, it may be height or soil as a, and can be an attribute. Or three dimensional GIS, like z is not a function of x, y, z. Z calculated complex mathematics actual attribute values are independent of x and y value x and y like in our cartesian system how we'll allocate like four uh, quadrant is there in our coordinate system so we call as a cartesian coordinate system in that we have to mention x direction y direction but for z direction here in 3d case it will be a height which which is not related to not a function of x y or four dimensional GIS, we can consider time variation also. Like in that GIS option, we are depending upon X, Y, Z, and T, temporal variability also of the feature. So, representation of real world into a raster and vector format. How we will see if we get any fe any feature or any image uh, uh, of a real world map it will be appear like here it will be appear like our this uh, last layer if you see this is the real world feature and then when we try to demarcate our real world through vector data sets it will come as a like here how the lake has been uh, boundary as a polygon and here if you see one two three four four features are there marshland water body agriculture land and grassland normal barren land you can say if we see we used lines to demarcate the stream the thin line it is using line feature vector data line feature and the polygons boundary has been demarcated by polygon feature of the vector data set and like likewise only marshland and 
uh, grassland also demarcated and then when we go for raster raster as i told you raster is in number of cells grid format so every cells like line feature is also in a cell but having similar value of what is water bodies showing like that day i showed you two number representing water body so all this blue color rasters and uh, the cells having same value same number and the green color light green color raster having same value like one or three any number as per the raster grid and then it has to be unique number for one feature like that so for raster it will be in a grid format or cell format so this way we can represent using raster and vector data uh, how we'll be dealing with the real world feature but in real world we can't only rely upon raster like grid grid cell values or grid cell data or we we can't demarcate everything through polygons so we need both of the type of data set for representing real world in our map or in our any study area for any of the uh, thematic study like you can say water body study or urbanization study or industrial feature study or any population density map or any political map or geomorphological map or soil kind of map any land use land cover map any kind of map we need both the data set to work upon we can't represent only by raster because it can't be understandable for a general public any map we are preparing just to understand understand make people understand what we are going to uh, deal with what are our inferences from the map what uh is a problem we have found out and we worked upon represented in our own model and prepared this map as an output and the result shown through the legend i will show you when i prepare a map in the next coming week i will prepare and i i will say you guys also try to prepare as per your own theme so it it will it will make you uh, it will give you very good insight for when you work upon raster and vector data set by your own using this free open source software like qgis so raster data model if you see here raster how the raster structure is and how the in gis map how the vector structure is as i told you any map having their own tile in raster data set tile this tile is this 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 plus sign if you see this is the last point text is representation of control point means okay this tile you are going to deal with any uh, rectangle we can in raster we we are speaking we are calling as a tiles or here like ticks they they demarcated to represent the control point over the globe okay this is my area this tile i am going to deal with this is my study area so and you can see here in raster what is happening in case of vector we are able to demarcate each feature in a different manner but in a raster we are demarcating in a in a regular shape cells or grids so some some are partially filled if you see here half green filled that is partial location with attribute is just a part of a cell so partially we can't demarcate through raster data we some values will be missing so for the, for this reason we will go for vector data set in vector data set if you see nodes and vertices so nodes are speaking about the point at the end of the arc and vertices are intermediate point point along an arc and discrete points is this individual point of a feature like center point you can say so polygon here polygon is representing and here how the area is represented by grid cells i was just showing the structure of raster uh, raster and vector data model so now our uh, this uh, this week topic is how to deal with uh, the data set data model and what how to represent these things like using geo referencing projection coordinate system and this thing what will be our reference system and how we locate anything over the globe like if you see i have showed you uh, google earth engine when you open have you open any time google earth engine you will be able to see whole globe when you open in google itself when you just type google earth i will show you once yes yes ma'am yes ma'am okay so 
so when we uh, when we open our google earth it will it will directly lead you to a globe and from there you have to reach out to your own region of interest so how it will show and how you are allocated there you'll be able to see from google earth see how it will be coming it will come for our region okay someone is asking for request i guess so we can rotate it and we can zoom it also when we i scroll it i'll be able to zoom it okay i directly i did not install this application is also there you can install in your system and you can work but uh, i am directly opening from uh, google so it will be taking time to move in as per internet connectivity or bandwidth okay okay it's not moving for me okay so yeah so we are here in india so we can see as much we can zoom that google earth having very good re resolution but the problem with google earth is you can't download the data set here Uh, you can visualize you can see your place or your study region whatever data you are interested but you can't download data from here and more than 5 year you can't go back here uh, okay. okay maybe not here in google earth i have this application also in that you can go back and forth in any study area and you can look upon uh, that this having very good resolution as much you can zoom you will be able to see more feature see i am zooming in and see as a as a google map as we used to locate our nearby buildings road maps and these things see it is having very good resolution you will be able to zoom and able to see the individual buildings also see here when when it just load it will be very clear imagery so you can see the features here but you can't download the data and you can't go more than 5 year back in this google earth so this is one limitation of that google earth okay ma'am yeah so like that you can move forward okay i just showed you just to get some interest so you will yourself will open and you yourself will explore this kind of things so the data entry process i am dealing with it. for today's class most important most time consuming in gis part because you know as i showed you going to google earth engine or going to your bhuvan website or any of the open source open data source platform for collecting data it will take lot of time and money first thing as a surveyor also if you see 75 uh, to 80% money used to go for getting the inputs for your own model or for your own project or anything so it will it will take lot very time consuming process in gis but when you get not in gis also in general uh, any other analysis also data collection is a big task to deal with and uh, when you get the data then only you will be able to execute your plan and move forward as per the methodology so without reliable and appropriate data the rest of gis work is meaningless if you get if you get the shape file of any other reason you can't demarcate it properly or if you get any any urbanization uh, for uh, for you want to deal with or for any medical issues in a reason and then you get to wrong data or meaningless data you are not able to access the data in your gis software or you are not able to perform any further analysis over that data set then all things are useless or meaningless so you have to be very appropriate or very clear that's why i am talking last two three lectures over this data sets only then only we'll move forward over the maps or software things first we need from where we will get data set what are the resolution what are the uh, formats of the data set where sh it should be apply what are the method should be taken care to apply into our gis model so that is the main thing to be taken care so maps whenever we analysis we do any analysis manipulation and then further we have to represent it how we represent in our gis using maps 
allocating the things into a map then only it can be understandable to anyone who is going to see your output or your work so map is the most common representation of spatial data spatial means as i told you it talks about on the space the positional uh, positional uh, value you can say exactly where it has to be located especially okay are the primary source of, for the most gis project to represent a spatial data so the data collection in the field is considered considered through prime we we rely on mostly on primary data and data sets as i talked in last class also which refers to the first observation put into the database the first observation has been taken over this kind of data set or you can say any survey data for a land reason as per the soil property or as per the number of population as per the number of uh, community as per their age group also so what they are interested in you can demarcate you can look into or as uh, if you see as per the political map like more people are uh, willing to give vote for this kind of community okay so these kind of maps can be used in any of the uh, like any of the field as i told you you know for uh, political things also if you see the polls and these things in news for, from where they are getting all this thing through remote sensing only through gis things only they are getting their maps they are getting the polls they are getting these things using this gis service online service and they are locating so many that's why uh, nowadays how everything are uh, on the website open source for general public to see or to access so as engineers or as a researcher people need some more detailed thing but for basic understanding of graduate level undergraduate level people can understand going through the open source websites and people can download and see see the attributes see the feature as i have showed you, you in my first class so digital products which are set of process data ready to use are available from various organization or commercial sources so you can go and you can access these things so like as i told you for maps okay for maps like to we can get the data from maps also like if you see survey of india having the topo sheet of our overall the globe but for survey of india mostly we are dealing with our country indian region so this maps also helpful to get the insight okay geo to geo reference okay this feature are there from last 10 year before the land the the cities of not even urbanized it is ru ruler community later after 10 year if i see the road maps how it it has uh, converted into paved land and how the industry has been established number of number of buildings also has been hospital hospitality also increased medical uh, facilities also after covid if you see number of things have been changed you know people are surveying based upon before covid and after covid also pre covid jogon and after covid things so this maps are helpful through this field data set like a surveyor go on to the field over the reason of interest and collect the data set which data set they are interested in to work upon and digital product like people get the satellite product if you see over the globe satellite and their from the remote sensing data set tabular data most most of the people having the things in in a tabular format database management system in their in their uh, register if you see in general government organization people having only register things are manually manuscripted in a in a register or everything is mentioned nowadays people are shifting last past 10 15 year people are shifting to online sources gis software and this thing but earlier human inputs used to be there if you see all maps has been planned and aerial surveys also performed where in hill in hilly regions himalayas or northeast region or if you if if you know sikkim region also is one of the remote area northeast all so this on interboundary intercountry boundary also we are not able to get the data manually so where we will get through aerial survey and these things remote sensing data also have been useful as a data inputs in our gis software so what are the data types and data sources and their sources in india as we know 
see we have digital elevation model from where the data source is geographical survey of india gsi natmo national atlas thematic map of Orga organization survey of india digital terrain data terrain elevation also these sources are helpful to get the data land use land cover map to see the land use feature like as i told you road feature agriculture feature these are the urbanized land these are the agriculture land these are the forest area amazon forest how the fire had happened and how they caught these things remotely then people are other country people are not aware of this remote sensing data have been useful land use land cover changes showed how the fire has incorporated and in earlier because of temperature because of climate change these things so land use feature are like in trend you can say people are mostly using to see any city or any <coughs> sorry reason of interest people are mostly interested to see the land use feature if you are any of the domain if you are under transportation domain you will see the how the traffic is moving from one region to another what are the peak time of traffic moving if you are interested in urbanization so you will see the land use changes happened how the agriculture land shifted to industrialization and how the number of lands converted like barren lands converted to flats and these things how the industrialization happened and agriculture people more towards uh, okay this area is fertile so it can be cultivable for our crop so this kind of crop for this kind of soil condition we can use you know so these kind of things can be performed for using land use land cover feature land use land cover gives lot of insight for the different domain people that's why it can be seen by number and you know nowadays lot of high resolution land use map are coming overall the globe not a particular india if you search a land use land cover uh, data set over open source data set you will be you will be able to get the land set imagery with uh, very good resolution high resolution imagery overall the globe you will be able to get you will be able to download also the data set and able to import into your gis software and you can see the features you can see the 10 year back feature they will be having a spatial and temporal data so you'll be able to uh, look on to these things hydrography which deals with your river stream how if you see anywhere how the flood is affecting the reason sometimes and how the drought is affecting okay river was this much broaden or having good uh, uh, like you can say good flooding reason but later before rainfall or before monsoon season it got in drought because of lot of people have been taking this water so it got shrunk it got shrunk or because of monsoon or rain happened it got more flooded so nearby area from the river basin got more flooded so how it can be accessed so ministry of water resources state and central government water board are going to deal with this hydrograph hydrography data sets mostly the rainfall data the water uh, stream discharge data and uh, temperature data also climate data mostly these things are with this ministry of water resources and things and socio economical data mostly with the census bureau like uh, you can say survey of india and this uh, department of census bureau of economics and statistics they used to collect the population data uh, like past years you might have seen in your home people used to come and knock your door to ask how many people are residing or how many people are there uh, number of uh, kids or uh, how many people are earning they used to collect these things the census manually nowadays things have been now we have aadhar card now we have everything on the system if you tell your aadhar number your name your address your number of like who is your your family background your parental details everything used to come on the website so our prime minister have been incorporated these things and all so now everything are online data set people can get these things from the department of census bureau of economics and statistics they'll be able to deal with the census data the boundary the demographical maps and this population density map how delhi has been crowded in the how delhi has been crowded so much oh, where they are like uh, if you see uh, some reasons if you see northeast region people are migrant mostly from the from the borders area 
so these things can be accessed through this gis things also but we need data set where we go for this data set these are the data sources these are departments these some are online also some are you have to go and collect also and you have to incorporate into your gis model and you have to analyze as per your interest soil data is also there like national atlas map thematic map organization and fo is also there like food and agriculture organization is also give you online through online your soil uh, feature over the land surface like if you are interested in madhya pradesh or uttar pradesh or any other region you'll be able to see the soil map of the particular region through this website go and open and just search it you just google it you'll be able to see these things and wetlands also from this natmo and uh, remotely sense data like national uh, mostly we are using this national remote sensing agency for remotely sense data so these are the data yeah. types and their sources in india okay so how the data entry process happens in our gis model like first people used to plan in any organization you have to plan and organize okay you are interested in medical field or you are interested in to deal with how the industrialization or urbanization is happening or you are interested in your agriculture perspective like okay this land is barren this land is fertile this kind of soil feature is there this kind of land uh, land changes practices are happening now how will able to access this area and how will able to see this changes plan accordingly get the data from the data sources keep in your gis model geo references first see every data whatever we collect from primary data or secondary data it is having some error to first we try to remove that error try to resolve the uh, error like some if you go and if you collect frequently year data you you won't see that much changes like in water level also changes happening monsoon wise seasonal wise like before monsoon before rainfall these are the condition after rainfall these are the condition but uh, in a frequent year you will not be able to see uh, you will not be able to check the minor changes you will see after 5 10 years but frequently you won't see so some uh, that are also some uh, you can say irregularity also there in data collection or manual uh, some errors also have been incorporated in collecting these kind of data set so as in survey also we used to refer number of errors have been encounter and then modify the our data then we'll be able to able to do another analysis over that data set as per our interest so like that we resolve the errors then we geo reference the thing geo referencing i will tell you in my another slide also but here i just showed you one flow chart that's why based upon that i am this introducing these things to you geo reference and projection projection means you'll be you got the data you don't know from where it belongs now i'll be allocating it into our map through projection okay this is my this area you know from your own survey or your own understanding you got collected but how you represent in your map to to see another feature on the particular reason and you'll be able to demarket some more extra feature so it can be deal by using geo referencing and projection system so i will be able to tell you next slide in the next slide and then how the data conversion from raster to vector or vector to raster based upon our own interest and based upon okay we need a uh, vector data model to demarket this reason and for this feature we should go for raster data so it will be good to appear or it will be able uh, we will be able to get some more insights using this two model which i told you real world can't be explained one using one of the model we need both the both the model representation then only we will be able to represent much more better way and understanding way to the general public so construct the database through attribute table through database management system through your excel sheet and enter the attribute into the data set you can add you know in the gis in qgis when you go to attribute table there is one edit option manually you can keep these things but in vector data it will be more complex you have to type 
and you have to move and give some more calculation when you perform analysis you will be able to see how the changes happening through your own editing that's why people used to say model because real real life scenario or real world scenario it is demarketing into into the your model through editing you will be able to do so it will be your own model okay so general reference to thematic map like as i told you about this population density map major city map river basin map if you see here general references means okay i am demarketing india here from there you see here pakistan is there nepal is there bhutan is there near the neighboring countries and then you can see here how the river basin indus ganga brahmaputra this is river basin map major city like if you see here you will be able to see nagpur jaipur kanpur lucknow delhi major city in india so the thematic means like we are going to as i told you your own area of interest your own area of interest means you are going to deal with a theme you have this work you are not interested in any other feature for this study area okay you want to work over soil map you want to work over to see the industrialization change or you want to work over and see the transportation facilities over a reason okay this much traffic is there so transport people also dealing with the medical people okay they they want to allocate okay these many covid patients are there in this region how we got our covid app and these things using this uh, census this study okay this area has been demarketed it should be isolated so this home this building should be isolated how the government is accessing this data through gis tool only so this are the thematic map thematic is telling about for what purpose you are going to work upon in gis or what is your interest which feature you want to deal with or which application way you want to work upon this gis so general reference data is for general purpose it include multi theme you it, you can uh, you can allocate number of feature as per your own interest like here same map same india map are telling about neighboring countries are telling about this major river basins are telling about the major city in the india map so these are the four themes you can see here so thematic data demonstrate particular feature or a concept it includes one theme one theme should be there to allocate any of the map individual theme can be extracted from general reference map a set of thematic data sets can be combined into general reference map so a set of data can be into one map but it will be more clear if you go one by one theme like Uh, okay i am i am interested in to see the land use changes so what will i do first i will see first i will see how are the soil properties there how many the uh, what what are the area covered by forest land what are the area covered by agriculture land what are the area covered as a urbanized land like where mobility is there means where school college hospitals and temples these things are there and where uh, where road are paved good rigid pavement and these kind of things where roads are like uh, cut, you can say like uh, poor kind of village community is there or where uh, very well pipeline structure or drainage structure is there this all kind of a theme okay so you can work any of these things and you can see you can see the open street map is uh, open street map is one of the example of this thematic map you can see number of feature into a a map thematic map so geo referencing now see anything when you have the data you how you will locate on the on the earth surface if anything you got the data for uh, for the from from your own state for a particular reason of interest i got the data from my own reason for the same same re, uh, same uh, reason of interest but for another feature like you are interested in urbanization i am interested in agriculture feature another person third person is interested in see the medical facilities and these things so what you will do for the same study reason but for different different aspect 
so what you will do you will collect this kind of data but when we all sit and work upon these things to understand okay this locality is having such kind of things now for for future scope or for future how the population is increasing what are the coming demands will be or how the changes may occur in this region this all three data sets should be deal into a same reference system into a same because it demarcating the same region of interest so we need to locate or provide a reference on the globe so that is called geo referencing assigning coordinates from a known reference system such as latitude and longitude utm universal transverse mercator i will tell you in my next slide explain i will explain you these things to to page coordinate of a raster or image or a planar map okay your coordinate into a page now you are willing to demarcate it into a map how you will do through geo referencing geo referencing allows raster data to be view analyze with other geographic data okay so other geographical feature also you can incorporate into the same map through layering as i showed you in my first class how over the globe how through layering layering happens only by geo referencing without geo referencing okay your uh, population or your customer map will go another side your soil map will go another side your land use land cover map will go another side your road feature or your urbanization map will go another side so to demarcate into a same study region you have to locate it over the globe using latitude longitude points or geo referencing system geo referencing uh, geo referencing is a process defined as registering or fixing data to a standard coordinate system there is a standard reference which for a globe it has to be it has assigned which we are following for our own study our own work and which other people are also it is generalized for overall the globe Glo people like it it is followed in usa also it is followed in any other country over the globe and by india also but we have our own geo referencing system but for general we are mostly dealing with so no data can be go like our reference system is different and usa people who is dealing with the same feature and the same thing their reference system will be different we can't compare we can't keep the same thing in our gis model it won't overlay upon each other it will go another side without geo referencing so we are fixing the point in over the globe i will show you how we are fixing there are different geo referencing ma uh, models also types also and how what is the procedure also which we should follow we will be going to tell you in my next slide the mess the best method to establish establishing a proper geo referencing is to define at least four reference point so four reference point as i showed you that tick into our uh, raster structure and vector structure it was a control point control point means we should have at least four geo reference point to allocate any map over the globe around the area being digitized which we are interested to digitize each with a precisely with real world coordinate position it should be a real world coordinate position means you can't allocate anything uh, over the globe as what do you want latitude and longitude you should know where it is latitude what is the latitude and longitude of the way. that's why in gis we are using gps also which is which is going to be come in our next week class i guess and then the real world coordinate system position that is typed into the program program means our gis software with the with the known reference point digitized feature can be properly located on the earth okay so if you have your reference point at least four reference point to allocate any of your map is needed digitized feature can be properly located over the earth surface geo referencing changes or transform the digitized file into coordinate system of the map like we have one image file raster image and we want to locate over the globe so through geo referencing at least four ticks or four point we have to locate we can able to map or we can able to 
impose that map over the globe. So I will show you when I do in my QGIS software. And then, huh, how to do georeferencing? See, as I told you, four ticks are needed. Here, I'm, I have shown you how the registering data into the coordinate system is happening in image one and in image two. Image one is showing the four corners, corners of the map over the globe if you see this map it is showing 30 degree north and 30 degree west one point we have to go we have to follow one uh, dimension like we 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 should go clockwise like if you see here one two three four it is a clockwise rotation or we can go anti-clockwise also but generally we used to follow clockwise uh, point location so, first point, you see at the border corner, 30 degree north, 30 degree west, that is the corner reference point. Second point is 30 degree north, 50 degree east. Third point is 30 degree south, 50 degree east. And fourth point is 30 degree south, 30 degree west. So, like that, we can locate one image in our GIS software through four corner reference point. Or else, we can... We need only four points. If we know this grids, okay, what are the intervals of this grids? 30, 30, 20, 0, 0, 20 south, like that it has, it has the interval. So, okay, here 20 degree west or 20 degree north. So, if you see the first georeference point is 20 degree north, 20 degree west. Second, it is, it is following the clockwise direction, 20 degree north, 40 degree east. We have to follow the grid line, okay? And then 30 degree south, 40 degree east, and then 20 degree south, 0 degree. It is showing the center point. So, like that, it used to go. So, georeferencing can be performed through the corner point or in between point, but it should be four point and properly located over the grids or over the map. How georeferencing? Uh, what are the systems of georeferencing? It is uh, as I told you, uh, the data sets may be continuous or may be discrete. So, georeferencing system is also continuous and discrete. Continuous, again, de uh, again classified to relative and uh, direct and discrete having like postal codes or it is having one unique value. Like your own address can't be matched to any other address over the globe. It is a unique number or unique postal address or pin code and if you see that is a district uh, discrete georeferencing and continuous re relative comes means polar coordinate polar coordinate always associated with the reference point that is a relative we we used to take from a relative direction to this point polar coordinate and here we have, we are more focusing towards this direct uh, continuous georeferencing system because it is covering elevation referencing, datum, coordinate system, map projection, which is an important part of our georeferencing in GIS. The georeferencing system, when we speak about polar georeferencing, it is based upon the measurement of distance in relation to any reference point or any reference direction to an axis. Offset distance method is it will specify the location either direction or a distance or any other distances from a specific object in in the terrain. A road network is also a reference system which often based upon the measurement of distance from given intersection. In discrete georeferencing system, the position of a phenomena are measured relative to a fixed or limited unit over the earth surface discrete having a limited or discrete value and if you see road network it is measured from a given intersection offset is also from an object we are allocating any direction or distance from an object or polar it is telling the direction relative to or from a reference point to an axis. So, that are the difference between three or uh, four georeferencing system. There are some more which will be focusing. I just told you some differences over this georeferencing system. So, in 
allocating in allocation of any of the feature over the globe we need four thing which i told you datum georeferencing system projection and coordinate i covered georeferencing system now the datum datum you can say the mathematical model must be related to a real world feature like we can we used to say okay if you go to any uh, railway station or any hill station or any of the geological station you will be able to see one uh, uh, one milestone uh, one stone or a pebble used to be there where it has to be mentioned like okay this 130 meter from mean sea level or railway station generally having these things used to have you go and you try to see these kind of things you may not be uh, able to uh, you may not have uh, see when you try to catch these things you'll be able to see okay this much from mean sea level so it is located above to 130 meter or 150 meter from the mean sea level which is called a datum or reference frame for locating any point on the earth surface we are considering one reference frame it defines the origin and orientation of latitude and longitude lines through datum only it is a mathematical model to to represent our real world we are considering this is our datum every country have a uniform datum through that we are allocating the different latitude and longitude point and from that we are able to access or geo position any of the feature over the globe so it is universal you can say for all the country over the globe so defined by spheroid or spheroid position relative to earth center the datum can be defined by the spheroid like earth center or the local view, you can say so datum is a reference point people considering earth center earth is not a sphere it is a spheroid so it is having x y z and the intermediate value also so any location can be accessed the latitude longitude from a geological center or a reference point many countries have their own different reference system our india also having our own reference system but now to to universalize or to make things in a uniform manner everyone is following one system so that anything which you geo position in the gis software it can't uh, like when you geo reference other country also geo reference it will set on the same referencing system that's why we are following the uniform datum i will tell you what are the uniform datum so our survey of india is following everest i will tell you. sir might have told also generally now we are following world geodetic system wgs 1984 but now all the things have been come uh, over the G uh, wgs but earlier survey of india our india system having our own datum which is in kalyanpur madhya pradesh madhya pradesh is the center of india okay the middle state center of india in that kalyanpur is a region which has been considered as a datum for india and it has demarcated by george everest it is not a, don't uh, compare with the uh, mount everest it is a george everest that is a scientist geological scientist who demarcated uh, as a uh, this uh, projection and uh, this datum so it has named as a everest uh it has 1983 or something year so everest uh, datum we are considering but now for uniform keeping the thing uniform everyone is following wgs 1984 projection system so from the datum now we are coming up with the projection a map projection is a mathematically described technique of how to represent the curved earth on a flat map earth is a curve thing as i showed you the map also you can see here how it is not a flat map the lines are not vertical lines or horizontal line it's over the globe so it is a curved surface it is not a flat to to 
to bring the curved surface on the flat map we need a projection system we need a reference point we need a co coordinate system okay so these three four things are very much important to allocate a point also over the globe to see it into a 2d map from the 3d spheroid or 3d geoid projection are the spatial configuration used to fit a proportion of the globe onto a flat view you can see in a 2d representation that is spherical data from the globe is converted into a flat 2d presentation it is impossible to make spherical map into perfectly flat map without some distortion see if you try to take a ball take a ball roll it with a paper as much as you try and then you see how much point it is covering if you roll also properly it is it is failed to cover your top portion or bottom portion means pole of the globe it won't it is impossible to bring everything from the 3d spheroid to your 2d map it will cause some distortion distortion means some error may arise it may change your shape it may change your area it may change your distance if you take a point a line two points like one line distance in a paper and roll it over a ball or uh, any spheroidal thing you will be you the same thing the arc or the the line won't be the same distance over there it will change because globe is uh, the spheroid a spheroid is from top and bottom it is a bit flat in and uh, i have showed you the latitude and longitude also it is changing the distance won't be the same over the globe so it is changing from equator to poles okay so it is important it is impossible to make the spherical map into perfectly flat map without a, some distortion so there are many projection each uh, each with its own advantages and disadvantage there are different type of projection system different countries has given their own projection system and then it has it has see some projection may be able to take their own reason appropriately but india or any other country not appropriate like our indian as survey of india has followed the everest the everest as a datum or reference system everest projection system everest 83 i guess so but universally we are following wgs 1984 so that is the thing that is the advantage and disadvantages of projection system we have to follow universal projection system then only we will be able to demarcate the same line or same point or same polygon with the same shape without without having any distortion but that is also not exactly going to happen so no single projection can maintain all the important spatial variables see we are interested in four kind of spatial variables which are shape area direction and distance so i will tell you the uh, uh, like when we preserve shape when we preserve area when we preserve distance when we preserve direction so gis can convert digitized map into the selected projection or the change from one projection to another as de desired so as per our interest area of interest what shape uh, what of the we four we can't preserve one or two will be able to preserve based upon our own interest we have to preserve one thing or two thing from this four qualities or four features so gis can convert digitized map data into the selected projection or the change from one projection to another as desired so the basic four properties are shape area distance and direction when we preserve shape we we call this projection as a conformity when we preserve area we call equivalence area equivalence when we preserve distance we we can uh, we call as a equidistance and when we preserve direction we call as a true direction that are the four basic property when we project any of the object over the globe with our own projection system so the projection how it is going to deal with see here how from the globe to a 2d map how we are projecting when we are projecting into a plain paper we are telling as a mercator 
when this spheroid comes like a uh, it it is covering this are the type of projection like uh, as a ellipsoidal projection that is robinson projection mole weight projection equal area cylindrical projection and changing one projection to another how it will appear over the globe india is a bit uh, you can see you i might have seen when i opened my google earth you might have seen india is a bit tilted but we need in a 2d map to bring it in our qgis we are projecting this map from the globe to the 2d as an image format or as an 2d x and y our coordinate system i think someone is asking so projection system the conformity a projection that preserves the shape of feature across the map is called as conformal projection conformal or orthomorphic map projection do this best so whenever we have to preserve the shape of the feature when we don't want to distort the shape we will follow the lambert conformal conic projection i will tell you what are the types of projection and why we are calling this lambert conformal conic projection and it is helpful to preserve the shape when we go for when we are more interested in to preserve area where we need to preserve area when we deal our river basin feature or any watershed area so these kind of things can be preserved through the area we need catchment to bring the rain or uh, like to to collect the rain and to get the inputs and to move forward i am talking in terms of river basin or water body structure so there we are interested in preserving the area so we will go for equivalence projection system uh, that is equivalence type kind of projection which is best for albert equal area or sinusoidal projection so equidistant when we are interested to uh, preserve the distance true distance we are going for equidistant projection system and when we are more towards direction when you when you see mostly the nav navigation things like when we have to navigate any ship or these things we used to more focus towards the true direction to preserve the direction we we follow the azimuthal projection which are well suited for the uh, direction purposes why we need projection to create a map to bring this 3d or spheroidal globe thing into 2d map to understand the feature because general public if we see on globe we are not able to access the thing we have to zoom it we have to bring it in 2d because we are able to analyze the things in a map kind of thing analyzing geographical data so two point you should uh, you have to keep in your mind why we are doing projection creating map and analyzing the geographic data we must choose an appropriate projection to map or communicate effectively part of good cartographic design also any map if you see you will be you will like the map when everything is demarcated properly into proper shape proper uh, like the the feature have been digitized in a proper manner and the exact projection system then only you'll be able to get more inputs or uh, more uh, the output or inferences from that uh, that map and analyzing the geographic data along with the datum and the associated ellipsoid the coordinate system we must know the map projection which we should as i told you in our next, uh, previous slide when we have to preserve area when we have to preserve shape which projection system we should follow it will be helpful for our area of interest identical projection are required for the data to overlay correctly because we are overlaying our 3d globe thing into the 2d map so see here there are three types of projection system azimuthal cylindrical conical so azimuthal when we when we have a you consider your globe as a ball having a light into it kind of bulb and then you are keeping one paper to get the projection to get the light over the paper so you will be able to get the point the true point or true direction 
so azimuthal this is called azimuthal projection when you wrap up a cylinder a page kind uh, wrap up over the globe as a cylinder you'll be able to locate one whole line if you see here true line we will be able to allocate so this is called cylindrical projection and the conic in conic also you will be able to get a line so this is called conic projection a cone you have uh, inserted uh, you you kept a cone over the globe and you uh, you bring the light and you will be able to see the projection so that is called three type of projection system azimuthal cylindrical and conic and i will tell you that azimuthal is helpful for location or direction and then cylindrical also helpful for your line feature you can say distance equidistance conical is mostly helpful for going for your shape or area uh, to preserve this this feature so additional projection feature see we have we have like we are projecting the globe over the paper 2d map or 2d sheet so how we are projecting there are different way of projecting the same feature or in a 2d manner we can change the aspect aspect means change the direction we can move the light sources like i i brought the light in between that and now i'll be changing the uh, lighting in a different way the shade will appear different the reflection will come in a different manner i will show you in my next slide change where the paper touches the globe here you can see in this azimuthal okay in the azimuthal one point is touching the 2d sheet in the cylindrical one line is touching in the conical it will go it will go as a line surface feature so how the paper is touching if i roll the paper in such a manner it it uh, it will uh, penetrate the globe i will show you in my next slide then this is called the change in paper touches the globe this is also a additional feature of projection see here azimuthal this is the view of projected surfaces azimuthal it will show you this way azimuthal type of projection is the most accurate at the poles because pole feature we can't get in our conical and cylindrical projection mostly when we have to deal with the point data sets or direction so you'll go by azimuthal projection graticule and uh, the cylindrical projection when when we roll a sheet and when we open the sheet so how it comes how it appears it's a cylindrical graticule projection system and see here conical will appear like that so now the three aspect the additional aspect as i have told you first is projection aspect means the angles if you see one cylindrical rolled over this uh, uh globe how it is showing the regular shape of the globe and when we change it we'll be able to see other uh, directional uh, feature also in our map when we see when it got oblique at an angle when we it got tra transverse like horizontal direction earlier it was regular vertical day. now it will be able to cover the poles also the cylindrical projection when we see the conical projection you see here here you'll be able to in this regular shape like vertex upward you'll be able to see one line touching to the globe you'll be able to get one line but when you oblique it you'll be able to see the bottom near to the pole site also in your projection system in your map and similar with azimuthal also you have to get the pole feature you keep your map over the pole of the globe you have to get other feature now you have to shift to shift to shift to move move it will give you the data on the globe you have to you have to try to take different aspect of the map so that is the projection aspect light sources what i told you light see in the light sources orthographic light source infinitely far away think of a sun of the sun like how from the sun light is coming and from the glow on the map you are able to see the orthographic projection system stereographic projection system means it is diverging 
from a point it is diverging vertical projection system how the earth would look from the space so like that from the space like if any satellite imagery is going to capture this things how it will appear so it will give vertical projection gnomonic uh, gnomonic pro projection is center of the earth from the center how it is dispersing over the map so these are the different light sources options are there but generally uh, it depends upon our own interest uh, which one shall we go for which area we are interested in over the globe because other country people are using different kind of uh, projection system for our river basin i will tell you in which grid india is lying and uh, how we are allocating indian feature or indian state or administrative boundary or river boundary for and which a projection system we are going to deal with and other additional aspect is your change in paper touch as i told you you roll the paper and think you are inserting the paper into the globe earlier in tangent way you will be able to trace one line on the globe but if you roll it some more like lesser diameter you will be able to insert it and you will be able to get two lines exactly the surface intersect the globe in two standard lines so this is the way you will be able to deal with the projection system to get more and more exact data from the globe so tangent case a proper rest against the surface of the globe secant case the proper uh, the paper goes into and back out from the bottom it is coming out also and the globe intersecting two standard lines so we'll be getting two exact line feature so that is the way of additional perspective of the projection system now uh, for gis what are the general projection system we are commonly using uh, so mercator we are dealing with mercator is i have showed you so mercator the true compass direction are maintained lines of the latitude and longitude at the right angle to each other but area is distorted towards the poles means which kind of projection system means this is the this is the regular cylindrical projection system where you you can see here see as where the your map your 2d paper is touches the globe it will give you the true shape or true point or true line but where it doesn't touch it will be a distorted right so if you go from equator to pole in the regular this cylindrical projection system you can see only equator is touching the paper other things as you go from bottom or uh, from center to the top also you will not be going to trace the same feature with the same shape or size to your map so it will get distorted that is called distortion so that's what the mercator is telling like true compass direction are maintained lines of the latitude and longitude at the right angle to each other but the area got distorted towards the pole so that is talking about the regular cylindrical projection system see here this is a cylindrical projection we often use universal transverse mercator utm we generally use as a projection system which is coordinate which is a coordinate system applied to a mercator projection transverse mercator means now it got horizontal direction so now you you can see you will be able to get the poles also into your map exactly you will be able to trace the feature of the poles from the globe to your 2d map exactly so that's what we told uh, i uh, we have often used this utm projection system so uh, we we are too much interested as per uh, like what we want to preserve like shape area distance direction so which kind of map we should follow so for shape as i told you conformal area equidistance uh, equivalence or equal area projection system distance equidistance direction azimuthal for direction or for location for any point feature we'll go for azimuthal projection system each map can preserve only certain property as i told you four feature we can't preserve all 
we follow such a projection system which can preserve one or two most probably only certain property no projection is perfect which could preserve all the map property no flat map can be perfect actually because we are tracing the feature of the globe 3d globe over a paper we can't perfectly uh, import perfectly keep from the 3d spheroid to a 2d map so equivalent and conformal most fall between the two or two as a com com uh, compromises so we have to one thing we have to compromise we can't uh, able to trace all the features exactly at the sh actual shape and size so now this is all about the projection system what we are uh, going to follow also what are the types what are the feature now the coordinate reference system i told you about the datum i told you about the geographical reference system i told you about the projection now i'm telling about the coordinate reference system so a system of expressing the position of a point on the earth surface by a planar rectangular coordinate using particular map projection such as utm lambert conical projection or azimuthal stereographic projection uh, that is used in uh, netherlands so that is called coordinate reference system coordinate reference system is allocating a coordinate point like latitude and longitude over the maps so that is called coordinate reference system there are two type of coordinate reference system one is geographical geographic coordinate system another is projected coordinate system geographic means over the globe exactly over the globe now when you want to import in your gis and you want to digitize or you want to map it you want to trace the location you want to trace the like you want to trace the area you have to convert it into your universal transverse map getter that is utm projection system then only you'll be able to get any calculation statistics of the feature or else you can't get oh it is over the as i told you wgs we are using as a universal nad is your north american datum 1927 that's why nad 27 and wgs 84 is a world geodetic Sur survey that 1984 and everest is our indian projection system geographic coordinate system so uh, to get some calculation or mathematical statistics boundary we have to convert the geographic coordinate system to the projected coordinate system so the coordinate reference system having this key components like horizontal unit vertical unit and projection information then only it will allocate the exact lat long or exact location of the feature over the globe so as we are more interested in our country so indian utm zone is coming under three zones here it is showing six only but it is covering 60, 47 also india has total 6 utm zones where gujarat from far west lies in zone 42 and arunachal pradesh far east lies in zone 47 so you can see here india is having utm zones in numbers 42 43 44 45 46 and 47 also so this is the indian utm zone so now for map we need we need coordinate system we need projection we have to geo reference these things based upon the uh, datum and the given reference system which in general we are going for wgs 1984 for which followed by overall the globe and then why we are doing all these things to get a map to get our feature into a 2d frame and how will uh see the map we have to scale for our study reason like over the globe in india in country in that particular state of any of the state like you can say madhya pradesh maharashtra uttar pradesh or anywhere for your own district like you may be in bhopal or you may be in lucknow or anywhere to locate these kind of things you need scale scale is dealing with from the big feature to the tail view of smaller feature so we need a scale to define a map so scale of a map 
is defined as the ratio of distance to the distance on the map to the distance on the ground both should have same unit actually so for example like if i am saying okay this map is having 1 is to 20000 of a scale so now for the given scale one unit on the map represent 20 unit on the 20000 unit on the ground therefore 2 cm on the map how how it will how it will represent 40000 centimeter on the ground okay and if you convert in meters it will be your 400 into 100 uh, like uh, 100 centi uh, one centi uh, one meter is equals to 100 centimeter then when you convert it it will come as a 400 meter so it means 2 centimeter if you are moving from one line to another line 2 centimeter distance you have to move on the ground about around 400 meter then only you will reach to the direction that is the scale so a scale may be expressed in three ways like unit equivalent representative fraction and ratio the photo the photographic scale of one millimeter on the photographic <laughs> represent 25 meter on the ground would be expressed as follows like one <laughs> unit equivalent one mm is equals to 25 meter means one mm in the map representing 25 meter on the globe and representative fraction uh, fraction means one unit is equals to 25,000 unit over the ground similarly it can be represented in three ways so that is same thing can be expressed in three ways it has mentioned as i told you in my last class also and i showed you some map also how the large scale and small scale maps we are able to see and what are the details we'll be able to catch from these kind of map like larger scale map larger scale photos for example 1 is to 25000 covers small area in a greater detail like as i told you over the globe in indian country in your state in your district your home it will show you in a detailed way so greater detail it will call a called as a large scale map a large scale photo simply means that ground feature are at a longer or larger or more detail size means you are seeing the smaller area in a in picture in a bigger detail manner but if you say small scale, you, you. if you see small scale small scale photos like if you speak like one is to fifty thousand it covers large area or but area is more you will be able to see whole the globe whole all over the globe but you can't get the detail feature of the of the reason so a small scale photo simply means that ground feature are at a smaller or lesser detail size means you will be able to see the same area in a in very small or a point base see here like here i have showed you the verbal scale one is to five lakhs one is to two thousand uh, two like fifty thousand one is to fifty thousand and one is to twenty five thousand how the scales are going from smaller to larger so when you see small scale bigger area have been covered but bangalore city is appearing as a point here but when you go for larger scale you'll be able to see the same bangalore city with much more detail with the boundary with the road feature with the water water uh, re, uh, water basin these things few more feature you'll be able to get few more details of the map you'll be able to see so that is showing the difference between smaller scale and larger scale so if you see here a small scale 1 is to 5 lakhs shows the larger feature area less information like a city can be represented as a point here but when you go for a larger scale map you'll be able to this you will be able to see the detail of the map some more information city represented by the set of point bus stop railway station hospitals etc lines as a road see in points you'll be able to see this railway station bus stop hospital but as a line feature you'll be able to see the road road lines railway lines drain lines power cable lines and as per the area you'll be able to see the lakes forest you know, 
these kind of things you'll be able to get <coughs> anyone having any doubt guys ma'am uh, i have little doubt on scaling ma'am uh, centimeter versus uh, scale okay okay ask me actually uh, i just joined mm -hmm. i just follow through the search class but uh, this one i understand but uh, centimeter to uh, the scaling i have some doubt okay which one uh, here what doubt you have ma'am uh, hmm. yes yes suppose the uh, 1 cm uh, the range mm -hmm. range to suppose one is the cm range hmm oh this one 2 cm ma'am ma'am this one yeah yeah explain yes. like see we have example of 1 is to 20000 scale yes so what we are telling is now for a given scale one unit in the map we have one map a image okay a map and in that map we represent it uh, i will show you one topo map you will be able to understand this uh, what is the meaning of a scale into the map over the ground so i i told the scale of a map is defined as the ratio of distance on the map to the distance on the ground so it is the proportion of okay 1 cm if you move from one point to another point in the map and the same 1 cm if you are telling on the map you have to move for on the ground you have to walk 20000 steps okay so that is the okay. difference like if i am saying 1 cm i am stepping forward in my map same for for this location to the another location you have to take 20 steps to move on the ground that is called the scale so now for the given scale one unit on the map represents 20 units on the ground therefore 2 cm on the map is equals to what two times 40000 cm on the ground which is 400 meters okay got it yes thank you yeah like that it has some different representation like we can represent 1 cm is equals to 400 uh, like uh, 20, 200 meters over the ground we can represent as i as per the previous example i am telling uh, representative fraction also 1 is to 1 by 20000 we can say or ratio wise we can say there are different ways to represent in your map you can write like this write like three three four ways now scales are coming in our qgis scale uh, i will show you the scale of the topo map you will be able to understand so this is the difference between small scale small scales are uh, like broader area lesser detail larger scale are smaller area in a good detail good num number of feature you will be able to read or get into so we we mostly bring a map for uh, mostly we, for our reason we are interested in large scale map large scale ma map means for any study reason see we have our own study reason smaller area so for we are, we are bringing more details so we are more focused toward large scale map and when we have to see all around the globe we are more focused towards the small scale map to allocate all the countries to allocate all the features so topo topo sheet grid how how we will be able to read the topo sheet grid of india as i told you if you see this map over the globe how the paper has converted from 3d to 2d see you will be able to understand so that is a that is a projection have been allocated here utm zone as i told you so how this india region has brought from the globe 3d spheroid to the 2d map giving the numbers for example if you see here if you see you will be able to see the numbers i don't know are you able to see the numbers 
how it has mentioned like 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 29, these things. So if you see here 73, 73 is coming under Jharkhand region. Jharkhand in is near to uh, Madhya Pradesh, next to Madhya Pradesh, okay. Jharkhand. So 73 yes. is covering this region. Like that, our topo sheet map has been prepared. Like that, when I, in my first class, I have downloaded the data from Bhuvan. You might have seen that is a grid-based data. In that, I have selected the tile. That was a raster image. But I'm just telling you how from the globe, 3D spheroid, we brought our uh, Indian region into a map, providing a projection system, each projection having a number of a grid. And from each number, we are again, uh, you can say, uh, dividing the grid into different. So, we will get some more better resolution imagery. Because see, if, if we just concentrate over 73, it cover whole state. But we need to, we, we need to get some more detail. So, how you will get? So, there are different scales of map, different characteristics of scale map. Like, Okay, let me show you this image. Then only you'll be able to understand. If you see here, this is the index for conversion of topo sheet number from OSM, Open Street Map, sheet number. So, I don't know. Okay, let me zoom it. It's not zooming. No, it's not zooming. Okay. So, if you see here, in this map, this is projected UTM zone WGS 1984. You are able to read now this small small digits and numbers. Anyone can say, guys. Numbers can say thirty-seven to ninety-seven. Yeah, yeah. But uh, then A B C D is still bit. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will, I will read for you. Just a minute. So I just told, like. If you see this map of the topo sheet for our Indian region, how it is coming, it has covered the whole India grid. So, one sheet, see, in our UTM zone, as I told you, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, covering the tile from UTM, Universal Transfer Mercator. When we are bringing, uh, when we are bringing from a spheroid to a 2D map of our country. So, now, if you see, it has j f g h i j this is this is also a numbering to the tile when it is 1 is to 10 to the power 6 scale so it is having it is the our topo sheet is having four scales one is 1 is to 10 uh, 10 to the power 6 another is 1 is to uh, 2 lakh 50 thousand next is 1 is to 50 thousand another Smallest style is 1 is to 25,000. So, how we are we are taking one grid and then again dividing into 16 other grid. Then from that 16 grid, again 4 grids. So, that's the way. If you see here. Able to allocate here. Don't know it is appearing or not. If you see here, how 1 is to, this is 38 number they have taken, 1 is to 10 to the power 6, see topo sheet number, here it has written Everest or polyconic, polyconic, like, sir, this is the map from Survey of India actually, so they have followed these things, now everything is modi going to be modified in the next coming year, they are working upon this thing. They will modify you based upon WGS 1984 because universally it has to be accepted. So, if you see here, 38 uh, a number of grid, uh, 38 grid has been selected. The scale of that grid is 1 is to 10 to the power 6. From that D part, they are selecting in that D section, 38 D tile, they have taken, they, it is having 16 uh, next another smaller grid. And then, then from 38 D, 16 they have south northwest northeast southwest southeast if you see here and this scale is 1 is to 50,000 and the one of this four grid again the scale is changing from 1 is to 25,000 so this is the four scale 
our Indian region or our Indian map is having currently. So this four scale is there in our topo sheet. Like that we used to follow as per our own region. Which region we are following on. We have to select that region grid. Then we have to see and we go some more detailed way. We'll be able to see our own uh, state, blocks, districts and our own home, nearby region, locality. So we, we can go like 38 D 16 Southwest or Southeast. So it you will be able to access 1 is to 25,000 unit or scale of the map. So that is the whole scenario. You can bring a more, more uh, finer scale when you work upon GIS. But until here, they are giving, they are providing the sheet. They are, this is the survey of India map like that they are providing. That is the thing. So if, for example, if you have 53C2 defined, what is scale map numbering system? So 52C, uh, sorry, 53C. See here, 53C is coming here. 53C is here. Are yaar, why it is moving? 53C is here. Here it is 53. In that, A, B, C, D, another 16, 16 sections. So here it will come, this portion I guess. So it will come here. And then it is in the ratio of 1 lakh. Uh, one is to uh, two lakh fifty thousand. Another C two it told means second number. Now it will go for one is to fifty thousand scale. So that numbering you should know. Like if it is telling fifty three, it means it is one is to ten to the power six ratio uh, scale. Then if it is telling fifty three C, now it is one is to two lakh fifty thousand scale. When it is telling C2, now it is 1 lakh 50,000, uh, 1 is to 50,000 scale. Now in that also southwest, northeast, northwest, southeast, anything else also telling. Now you should know this number is speaking which scale of the topo sheet map and how much detail we are able to get from that map which is openly available from your survey of India site but which can't be accessible to the general public that is also for uh, the the people who are uh, more towards this uh, things and they are it is confidential so uh, like you can download you can download the sheet you can give you reference in your gis and then you can access for better or finer scale details so this is the way to understand the scale from a topo sheet map so i want to show you the characteristic or different scale map which we are having for our Indian region from survey of India. So number of the map, for example, 53 is the million sheet. As I told you, 10 to the power 6. So number of division, it is having 136 division. And the scale is 4 degree by 4 degree. I hope you guys may know about this degrees to distance conversion. 1 degree is around 111 kilometer. Okay. Over the globe one degree change is speaking about a uh, one degree uh, is speaking about uh, 111 kilometer on the globe as a distance so scale four degree latitude four degree longitude scale in inches one inch is equals to 16 miles scale in centimeter i am talking about 53 number of map so for example that is telling about the interval and this thing scales and 53C, it is another quad, quarter. Quarter P means 16, another 16 grid. <coughs> See here, another 16 grid. One A, B, C, D, if you go until P, it will come as 16 numbers. And then it is having grid of 1 degree, 1 degree. Means if someone says, you download the data from survey of India of 53C. Then what will be the resolution you are going to get? So you will tell the scale of the map. The degree of the map is 1 degree by 1 degree lat long. And the scale of the map is 1 centimeter equals to 2.5 kilometer. Okay. And then 
the contour interval if we are interested in the elevation or the water level contours so you can say it will come around 250 feet like that and if someone says okay you download the data of 53c northeast region now you will tell what is the name of the data half inch data and what is the number of division it is having four division as you know as i have showed you it is having four division here see here it is having north northwest northeast southwest southeast okay so this is the way to read the sheet and then it is having the scale of in degrees 30 degree uh, 30 minutes it's not degree the dash is the minutes 30 by 30 minutes and it is having the scale in inches and in centimeter both has been mentioned 1 centimeter is equals to 1.25 kilometer and contour intervals of 100 feet and if we are we are going more finer resolution we'll be getting some more finer skill so that is the way of to read the map of any topo sheet so that is the thing any other question anyone is confused in scale degrees or map numbers or anything no ma'am are you getting now you please try to download the data any of the map and you see how the map is i will show you one map okay so please sure, try to sure, look what are the open sources data sets i have told here try to download in last class i have imported the uh, shape file please see that thing and try to do in your free qj software so this, yes, is, this is my email id and this is the youtube link you'll be able to access the course uh, videos okay okay uh, one thing i want to show you guys mm. okay. oh ma'am can you please show the slides uh, where your uh, youtube channel's link uh, is available actually i am importing the same thing into uh, this drive that is uh, provided by this course thing so from there i feel they might be updating you guys uh, okay, my no. notes my youtube link and uh, video links everything is there okay okay ma'am so when you if you want to download uh, oh, let me tell you about this topo sheet reading how you will read any topo sheet okay so some fact about this uh, things like distance i told 1 degree not able to point out okay see the distance per degree is 1 degree by 1 degree as i told you it's telling you about 111 kilometer distance per meter minutes is 1.85 kilometer over the globe distance per second is 30.85 30.85 meter over the globe now if you see if you download any map how you will download i will tell you here if you know see here how the india region i just searched online map this uh, uh, this map portal is there or you can search as a nakshe nakshe i have downloaded here i just uh, went to 30 uh, 53c topo sheet so it came already you can see here maps used to come like that only you see i will open one map for you i just open it is showing you can download also see here but you should know see here this is the tile uh, title of the map 45 d 7 so it depends so here if you see that is uttar pradesh map i have downloaded here so you can see here survey of india topo sheet see here survey of india topo sheet 53 k 4 so showing the land identified for compensatory afforestation so that is covering bijnor meerut muradabad and muzaffarnagar district here you can see the district names this is the state name you have to you should know how to read a map how to read ma'am ma'am yeah. ma'am here k4 means uh, ratio is 1 is to 50000 yeah let me see here i have told you okay see k is the ratio is yeah one is to 
Yeah. No, 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 not fifty thousand. When it goes more towards northeast, northwest, ah, uh, these things, then it is one is to fifty. It is one is to two lakh fifty thousand. See this one, this one, na? No? Okay. So see, it it might have It's... yeah. Wait. K four. No K four. Ha ha. No no. You are yes. correct only. Yeah. So one is to fifty. See here, the scale have been mentioned here. See, one is to fifty thousand. Are you able to read, uh, see my cursor? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. So it is showing. See, this is the number fifty-three K four map. This is the scale is mentioned here. This is the map. You will be able to see. Okay, what feature it is telling about air forestation? And you can see. You have to zoom it. This map. Okay. Time is not there much, or else I have imported this map in QGIS and I have showed you all the features there. Okay. So see here, what are the features? Is, uh, Sorry. Map. This is a larger scale map. No, this is not large. Ah, uh, this is a larger scale detailed map, larger, no? For a reason. Yeah, because all details because, are there. Yeah, yeah. For it is covering a tile. See here, which tile it has covered? It is showing here. This map, no. If you download, you'll be able to read. You should know where is what it is telling. So this map has been published by. A director of Dr. Hari, who who has made PhD surveyor of Surveyor General of India, it has it has it is having the scale of one is to fifty thousands, and uh, telling the height of contour height and contour in meters. What are the things it is telling? Land identify for C A and Salampur, and the style is index of sheet. Which sheet it has covered? See here, the K by four. This is the fourth number. It is telling, and the these are the legend. Legend, see here. When you zoom it, better you know if you zoom like this, you won't be able to read. But you, if you import this map in QGIS, you'll be somewhat able to read in a better way. But you have to georeference it first. So this map is telling this red color lines, road, according to the importance of stone. This is telling double line, thin narrow double line, double line. Much narrow, so how the thing dashed line and uh, bridges is with the cross structure also river basin. This is called the legend. Okay, so refer to this map as one is to fifty thousand. Sheet is fifty three K four first edition India region. Which region is covering? This showing you have to move. You will be able to see administrative index of Meerut, Bijnor, Muradabad. Some more feature. This is also a legend, or some more feature benchmark, and these things. So you should know how to read a topo sheet map. What feature? Like this is called as a scale. This is called as a legend. This is called as information. This is the general information from where you got. This is called the index of sheet. See, and when uh, there are some more tiles are there. Wait, let me zoom out. Not coming. Okay. Yeah. So, what are the feature it is talking about? So, you will be able to see more finer feature. This light green color. What is telling? All has been mentioned here in legend. See here. This is telling about. Oh, let me zoom. The lithos, bios, some encourage and mine area, grassland, shrublands. If you zoom in, you will be able to see. Are you able to see? I don't know. If you try to download and try to see this feature, it's a, this is more interesting to know much better because we are not going and seeing. We are just have to read the image. We know how to read a map, so that is the thing. See all the look. Location. It has. This is the K fifteen map showing land identify for contem contemporary compensatory afforestation. It is the map of K fifteen. So that is also. Okay. So like that, you can download. You can look over any map as I have downloaded. You can look on the features. See how. 
see it is also telling like that you'll be able to understand when you start reading any topo sheet map na you'll be able to understand all these numbers uh, digits k a b c d e f g h what is this telling how finer for resolution this map is covering so this is the thing here also if you know the number you'll be able to download the scale of 1 is to 50000 just type naksha or type uh, survey of india you'll be able to get all these features so i just showed you here ah uh, one more thing uh, where it went yeah if you see this map it is having i have to zoom in to geo reference any map how many points we need anyone please tell four points ma'am yeah. minimum minimum four point we need to four ticks we yes. have to make to geo reference yes, so here yes. if you see when you locate or import this map this is a pdf format but in qgis importing any raster or image what we have to do we have to convert it into jpg format then only we'll be able to import this. okay so when uh, we have to convert this to import that's why i'm not doing it will take some time so you try to download try to look into all these things so here you can see this all the latitude and longitude 78 degree 45 minutes and 29 degree 30 minutes this is telling about latitude and longitude if you see here this district this name that is another uh powerpoint presentation that is telling about all the feature administrative index they will tell the pushit map is demarcated by geographical survey of india so they used to prepare such kind of map and these are available for uh, it is a bit confidential and you can't get more than i guess 50000 scale you have to prepare by your own self for gis this numbers this things what it is telling it is highlighted you know how to read it these are the religion these are the index of sheet which sheet you have downloaded this is telling the number of the sheet this is the scale of the map and feature also if you see state boundary and these things this dotted red line what is telling about all are mentioned in the legend see this green region as i have told you this water boundary this is for assam that is this is that's why it is showing the brahmaputra river so topo sheet can be a procedure uh, it is formed by survey of india from hathi but kala state of dehradun the contact number also have been mentioned this i got from um, google only so i was just telling you for your kind information how you will get an access and read the topo sheet okay fine guys thank you so much for the class thank you ma'am thank you very much ma'am